day. <laughs> Welcome. Snowy day. Winter season. Finding our own path through the practice. That's my theme from last time. The message of taking care of yourself, please. So I'm going to say let's do a stand up start. Make a note to get back to seated pose. Just come back to that later on in our practice. It's actually a nice way to finish. So same standing pose, feet close, big toes touch if they will. Narrowing that base from the mountain pose into closer feet. Try to stand evenly. Connect with your breathing. First noticing. And going to that place where you are noticing your breath as we move through this series of movements. Five breaths, even breathing, nose breathing. Inhale, heart center under your hands. Exhale, starting to awaken Uddiyana energy in the low belly, that tone across the front hip points, little stillness. So we can combine these aspects of standing. If we stayed here a long time, we would get sore from it. It's very intentional, but maybe it can be softened slightly. One more breath. Creating an awareness in your low belly throughout practice, unleather, unless indicated otherwise, allow it to be a gentle, energetic tone in your center one of your centers. Please step out to mountain. Bring your arms up. Squeeze and pull. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, squeeze and pull. Shoulder blades, staff. Three more times. If your heels want to follow as you stretch up and spread your hands, you can balance on the falls of the feet and then exhale, heels down, elbows down. One more time, float it up, open it up, inhale energy, exhale, ground, shoulder blades together and down. Release. Crossing the arms in front to widen the shoulder blades apart from each other and then bringing the elbows towards each other behind the back. So one another way of moving shoulder blades, cross the arms the other way, spread shoulder blades wide, and then together and down the back. It's a different movement from the other one. Two more, one, one each cross, inhale, spread, back body noticing, exhale, elbows down, nice. And I see your little versions of you doing this with me and Trying to settle them where they go. Anytime we're doing anything like a plank pose, we want to have a nice stability, nice positioning. All right. Inhale, sun salutation, upward reach. Exhale, slow breathing, fold towards your legs. Inhale, lifting halfway. Exhale when you're ready and go back. So you can wait to exhale or exhale again once you arrive in your plank for one. So enlisting the whole body here, pressing the hands. It's really important to have your center engaged so that your low back is nice and strong. One more breath. Bring your knees down, toe tuck, go back for soul stretch, puppy pose. So the hands stay on the ground spreading, but without bearing weight so much, just letting them open. Stretching under the armpits, chest, upper back. 
Lower back. Knees. Feet. Breathe out one more time. Inhale to cow spine. There's a pulling energy here as you bring your hands to fit under your shoulders, releasing your feet, gently extend. Push your hands and round your back into cat spine. This moving with the breath gives you something to concentrate on twice more, the cow and the cat. Spinal mobility and core strength, make it count one more time. Release. Downward facing dog, first one. Come up, make any refinements. I do these little side to sides with the balls of my feet to find just the right amount of space. I just looked back and saw myself doing that. So what do you like to do here? Work with your hands and feet, your foundation. Wrap your shoulders towards your heart. Let your head come down. Belly uplifts, legs firm, and heels reach down. Bring it all together and soften what you can. One more breath. Let your knees come down. Let's do a moment back off the wrists, um, off the hands, walking to side, reaching child's pose. To the right, maybe you put your left hand on top of your right one. Hips high or low, head down, quiet. Breathe out again. Spread hands come back to center for striking cobra to warm up for the upward facing dog position. So I get a big reach here all the way out with the arms to make room to come up on the knees, lift your ribs and bring your pelvis forward. So I'll do it from the side. So extending with the arms straightened and then going back into a puppy. So the striking cobra practice four more times. Go forward with control and slowness. It's like a down, an up dog, sorry, from the knees, tone the belly and go back. Inhale, strike. Exhale, back. Whatever you wanna do with your feet is fine. You can have your feet up in the air or on the floor and then back. Release your feet and do the side reaching child's pose to the other side, maybe stacking the hands for one. Two. Deep breathing, coming into the parasympathetic state, the calm nervous system side. Exhale again. Coming back to center, ready for that up dog from the knees movement again. Breathing in. Whole spine, breathing out. So tail's gonna lift up here. Head reaches down, everything long in between. One, two, Three, four, maybe you've stretched out a little longer than you were when you started the pose. Low belly aware, make it to halfway lifting pose, walking forward, bring up your hands, lengthen through the top of your head. Fold forward, breathing out, hands move comfortably down. 
So you got your chin tucked, ready for this inhale, the feet press, the knees do a little bend, rise, reach. Touch and then exhale. Notice your shoulders, spread your feet, come on back into mountain pose. Take a free breath. Bend your knees, reach your arms, inhale. Exhale, fold towards your legs. Inhale, lifting halfway with forward energy. Going back, breathing out. Side plank with the knee down to the right. Bring your right knee to the floor, your left foot behind. So creating this narrow line of balance, you can use both hands. Just breathe freely here. All right, once you have your foundation, you can lift up your arm or and or your back leg if you wanna bring it up parallel to the floor. Okay, now five. Four, three, two, and one. Make your way back to center. Take the time you need to safely transition. And the other side. So the foundation first, that spreading hand. Where is it comfortable, right under your shoulder? Do you like it ahead of your shoulder? Where does that feel right, where you have your power? Knee down, foot down, hand down. Foundation, exhale, low belly. And then slowly bring up the arm possibly, maybe you lift the leg, one or the other is fine too. One, what can you soften? Two, concentrate. Find a steady gaze. This is balance. Three, four, this is calmness. Five, meaningful. Long enough to be meaningful. Come back to center. Downward facing dog, walk in, press back. Right leg forward, warrior A. Knees down, bring your right foot forward. Lean forward, get to your back foot and bring the heel down and then rise up. Different ways of coming in and out, coming up. Extended spine pose, pelvis forward, ribs lift, gaze is down. Make sure your low back has space. Big reach again. Reversing back to downward facing dog. So lean forward. Work your leg back, breathe out. The other side coming from the knees just to work that version. All these ways of moving our bodies around. Oops. Keep us nimble or teach us to be nimble. Spread feet, bring grace. Nice, long spine. Breathe deeply again, those back hip flexors getting a big stretch here. And then there's strength work here in the front hip as we bring the weight forward and press back downward dog. Wide feet, wide hands, as wide as your mat. Play, one, two, Three, <clears throat> five, breathing in, walk forward, let your feet gradually come hip distance apart to halfway lift, exhale, fold towards your legs. Bend your knees, coming up into Utkatasana. Inhaling. Exhale, back to mountain. Find your hip distance apart feet for an Utkatasana variation. The ski jumper version. 
snowy pose for a snowy day, hips down and back. The arms go back and the heels lift. Flying forward pose, one, two, do your own expression of this idea. Three, not gripping in the calf muscles. That's interesting. Okay. And five, heels down. Slide your hands down the back of your legs and fold in for five. Let your breathing gently rock you in this pose. Notice you're just allowing for some movement as you breathe in, maybe a little rock towards the toes and breathe out into the heels a little bit more. Take the time for one more whole cycle. Then come back up with the arms back. Heels down this time, reach the arms back. Sweep them forward and up. Bring them down and out to the sides, thumbs leading the way. One more time, thumbs down, reach back. Victory arms coming up. Stay in your spot. One more out to the side, thumbs up and press your legs to come up and straighten. Cross over side bend, bringing the weight to your left leg. Cross, balance, float up your arms, catch, and slow side stretch. A down turn to gaze at a spot on the floor. There's some core challenging aspect to this. I can feel some of the same plank muscles working here. Breathe out. Come up slowly with your inhale and release your arms as you breathe out. Moving into the second side, you can let it flow up and over. Then once you've Reach your way into your pose, then maybe soften, you refine a little bit, and then hold steady. Find your gaze. The gaze is soft and steady. Brings dharana energy to the mind. Concentration. One more. Inhale, up and open. Exhale, set your shoulders and step out. Stepping from the top of your mat to crescent lunge. Left leg first. You might step back to the whole foot and then pivot to the ball of the foot. Center this knee. Bring up your arms. Out to the side like a T. Turn towards your front knee side. Turn towards your back knee side. And let your heel come down, warrior B. I get some more space between my feet, nice and low in this lunge. Shoulders down, head turns. Let yourself drop in. Now that we're here for a little while, your brain might start to slow down the chatter a little bit. And coming up, coming to that left side for PA squat number, number one, turning out into goddess, come down the midline, working this one regularly, find center, Shoulder blades, low belly. One more time. Press your feet, 
coming up, a little glute squeeze at the top. Heels, toes, heels, toes, step, step, mountain. And the other side, that step back to the crescent. Concentrate, go back. So I'm gonna start with the heel down like warrior A, nor used to that, then pivot to the ball of the foot. This is the big balance challenging lunge this way. We were doing it regularly to get it easier, more accessible in our bodies and arms up, arms out to the sides. You turn towards the left with your spine. A slow turn the other way through the center. And then that heel comes down, refine out into warrior B. The knee centering on the front leg, the torso going right down the midline. So you're not forward in this pose, you're not back, you are centered and your head turns. The shoulders are soft as you reach your arms. Exhale, release your arms. Turning to the side for the goddess on second one, coming down the middle. So we can explore with the arms a little bit here. Bring up your arms, bring both hands to the back of your skull. Release your arms up, down. Thumbs down so the palms face back and come to the sacrum. Breathe a few more times. Keep your knees centered. Press your feet to come up and release your arms from behind you. Staying here, turning out, finding the warrior bee once again. to do the lean and reach pose. So inhale, warrior B. Exhale, extended side angle. So you can come to the floor or the leg, reach up. Bring your back foot in a little more if you need to and gaze towards that reaching hand. So practice this one as you like to practice it for one. There's a lot of strength so softening maybe your neck, what, where can you soften this? Only the energy needed. Exhale one more time. Release your arm, inhale, straighten the front leg, come up. Keep the legs straight and do a reverse with this straight leg. Gaze down. One more breath to find that stretch, find that reach back and up and release. Over the other side, the warrior B. In some traditions, they call it warrior two and they're the same. I try to be fast on that one when I go to a vinyasa class. Remember, B is two. It's all fine. <laughs> Ready for extended side angle. Breathe in. Breathe out. So you, over time, you get to know where you're headed in the pose. That spin down of the pinky side, gather the fingers, gaze towards the reaching hand. Extended side angle pose. This is a big side bend, big side stretch. The low back, one more time. Just the right amount. Come up slowly. Come back together out of that wide standing and into the front of your mat. Please. Warrior C is the leg back one. So bring weight into your right foot. Bring weight into your left foot. You can do either side first. 
I'm going to do the side of challenges to be more first. Well, I might introduce fresher. So we'll start to lean forward, bring your leg back, arms where they help you. So I think the traditional arms are the palms forward and together. But feel free to experiment, make it yours. Play with the idea of sending your energy where you want it to go. Determination, finding that stability. One more breath. Come down with some slowness, if possible. Mountain. Begin the second side as you're ready. Meet this side of your body in this moment and standing with a straight leg is one aspect and then the extension of the hip behind you. Forwardness in the pelvis. Coming in and out teaches you a lot. If you need to reset, just reset. Make it yours. Try to have a little fun with it. Come on out with slowness. Concentrate. There is only this. There's only this. And there you are. Receive that information. Weaving fingers, press forward. Keep some tone in your belly for this one. Pressing up, a little side stretch each way. Bend your elbows and flip your hands back over, folding down. Bending your knees and walking back. Knees down for Anjani Asana. So if you need more cushioning, but perhaps you're already working with the mat that works for your body, but they make these cool little mats that are just like knee mats. So you can have that if you need it to be comfortable for your practice. So low lunge, tracking the knee towards the middle toes, but it's really a low back aware pose more than anything that finding that extension in your lower back you can support there with your hands let's you open up your chest and flowing back into Hanuman's pose finding the forward bow go back and forth one more time trying it with my hands staying on the low back for that Transition. Use the back foot to then release your hands and come in for five. Precise, just the right amount of sensation. Forehead towards the shin. One more time, lengthen out and down. These, this transition is important part of the practice. You can use hands down if you need to. Keep contact with the floor. Flip over your foot, bring it forward. So do what you need to do to arrive safely. I'm gonna reset my back knee, just pick up and reset. So do those little things, try to get them out of the way. Knee Knee starts to go forward, lift your ribs, pelvis forward, support the low back. Gaze down for two, three, four, five. Keep your hands behind, possibly. Find the bow towards Hahnemann's pose. Come back. 
to Anjaniyasana one more breath, knee towards the toes. Into Hanuman's. Bring your arms out and down somewhere that grounds you, stabilizes you, and you can relax into forward fold. Include the sole of your foot here, the whole back of the body on that side, breathing out, forehead down. Coming up, maybe try the balance of bringing that leg back beside the other one without the hands. And a dip down, elbows bent. Stretch back a moment to come to your forearms. Dolphin pose, dive out with your hands together. Elbows make a triangle. Lift your knees, press into your forearm bones. Shoulders lift up, belly lifts up. A lot of the same stuff as down dog. Shoulders wrap towards the heart. Find steadiness and then if you want, you can swim your dolphin a few times. Bring your head out towards your hands and back in between your elbows. Nice and controlled. One more time into that forward shape and back forearm plank to the belly so you can come down as you need to you could bring your knees down which will take some of your weight to the floor if you need that lengthen the back body bring the front body towards the navel hips can be a little high to support the low back keep it safe four and five, let your belly come down, releasing your feet and stretching out your arms. Lifting your right leg and your left arm. Lower the other side, let them float up long and come down. Try to lift both legs at the same time. Keep the arms down and lower. Lifting both arms. Feel them connect the strength of them all the way down your back and release. Come over please to ridge line, resting on the left side of your body, balance on your side and support your head. Take a moment to find stillness. Bending your top knee, bring your heel towards your hip. The top arm, palm down, coming from above to try to find something to catch here. Some people do need to use a strap or something to reach. One of those little stretchy exercise bands would be nice if, in your toolkit if you need some extension. Now maybe the pelvis forward, the foot into the hand if you want to open up that space behind you a little more. Use the leg on the floor. It is all this. One more breath. Release your leg back to ridge line. Bring yourself up. I'm going to bring my top hand to the floor for this transition up to bent elbow. So give yourself enough room so your neck is okay with that. Lift up and then Basi, um, one of the auspicious poses, lifting that top leg up into the air, maybe catch behind your thigh or your calf or your big toe. This is a dynamic reach with that top leg. The bottom leg is dynamically grounding. Anantasana, there it is. Vishnu's reclining couch posture. 
Feel your core stability helping you stay here. Just do your own expression of it. Lower, hip forward again, and then over to the other side through center, long spine. And the second side, ridge line, shoulder, it's like sideline mountain, shoulder in line. I'm working on this when I'm sleeping, try to sleep more like this instead of so curled forward, a little more lined up. And then sideline half bow as you're ready, let that hand come from above to catch foot, ankle, rest. Comfortably heel towards the hip, a few cycles of breath. Eyes soft. Maybe you bring the foot into the hand a little bit or your ankle to stretch that half bow shape behind. Breathe deeply once more. Take the time to release those actions. Find your side balance again. Top hand in front of your chest as you lift up so you can land lightly on a bent elbow if that works. Arrange it, do your best with that or just keep your head down, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, that top hand can slide through the navel center on its way to the leg just to notice that core work and when lifting up, catch the back of your leg with a nice big open hand, bottom leg grounding, reaching. So you can reach up on, all the way up on your leg. Wherever that is for you, all the way up for you. Dynamic, strong, balance. And auspiciousness. <laughs> One more breath. Balancing on a, a couch made of a serpent. Seems like it could be shifty. Releasing down, then that hip turns back to the front ridge line. Belly. Half broke. Bring it on up on the right side. Rest on your belly. Come into yin mode, let be soft. We're staying mostly on the belly in half frog. Arranging yourself so it feels like a positive place. We can approach the sensation in our bodies the way we can approach the rest of the world with loving kindness towards what is functioning well, compassion towards what is tight or has a lot of sensation or struggles. Slowly, slowly. Really slow it down to come to the other side, disturbing yourself so little. Path frog pose, second side. Give yourself a moment to make the refinements that you need and then to try to hold it steady to relax the muscles. Rest your eyes. Listen for your breathing. Settling the wanderings of the mind so that our true nature may be revealed to us.
maybe glimpses of stillness. Noticing a sense of aliveness. Pure awareness and, con and consciousness. the impermanence of all things coming back to the middle reach your legs long slip your hands under your shoulders do a little cobra pose lift up reach this is a leg pose this is a low belly pelvic floor pose lift lift but it's more lengthening than high and release relax Ready yourself to journey off your belly. Um, we came up, we came down on the forearms. Let's come up from the hands. So spin them out at your, at your shoulder level to bring yourself to your knees. Push with some determination. Cat spine is a nice counter pose, maybe up on the fingertips if you want to try that, if it doesn't irritate your hands. I end up being very light on my hands here. Really pulling it up with the low back. And then hands down, spine slowly into extension. One more downward facing dog. Option to bring your right knee towards your nose and stretch it up and back to bring it to the opposite elbow. So you kind of curl in and then up and back. Same side elbow, play with it and up and back. Get a nice reach with that leg in the air and finding the other side. Exhale, inhale no, knee to nose. And let it flow back. Knee to that opposite elbow area direction and then back to the other elbow. Take your time up and back. Have a moment, shake it out, reach it out. Return to center, knees down. Cross your ankles or come around to the side and come over your feet. Sitting, aligning your spine, resting your shoulders, hands. Check in with your neck, gently long, head balanced. Extending your arms, but keep your shoulders where they are. So try not to bring your shoulders forward doing this. Keep your shoulders on the ribs. Thumbs can touch the index fingers if you'd like. The gesture of non-separateness, universal and individual self. That's what that represents in yoga. Tuck your chin lightly towards your chest. Breathing in from your low belly to your chin. Breathing out from your, your throat to the pelvic floor and then into the belly. So this is container breath. is trying to circulate your breathing in your torso, lightly ener energetically closing the root and the throat. It gives a focus to this meditation. Slow, slow breathing. Two more cycles, inhaling when you're ready. Trying to be staying with your own pace. And a chance for our last round, that cycle of breath moving in. The transition and the outflow of the breath down towards the roots, but then finishing in the pranic center, in the belly. Lift up your chin, 
touch your chest, lift your chin a little more, gazing down, head off to each side for a moment, and you release those front muscles that support the head. Back to center and release. Let's finish seated with Ardhamatsi Andrasana and then we'll lie down to finish. So legs out. You could do lying figure four instead of this one if you would prefer. They're different, but part of the same idea. Bottom leg folds in, facing forward with the knee. Top foot to the floor comes around the knee to whatever degree you can. Spine first, sit up tall. Find the rotation in your spine. Hand close behind you or even wrapping behind your waist. And then you can decide if you wanna hug this top leg in a little bit or let it rest into your arm. Slow breathing. Take the time for one more cycle to move through you. Exhaling completely. Release these actions, getting nice and tall as you come around and switch the legs. Tall spine rotation. Setting the back hand or wrapping the waist feet from behind. Come into your top hip and leg. Check in with that work for today. Eyes gently back. Remember to let your belly relax enough so you can twist. It's okay for your belly to be a little relaxed here. Feeling your way in, one more breath. Tall as you release. Come to the back of your body. And round back with the legs already in, if you'd like to try that. And you can use the pillow. Have some free time with your hip and spine movements here. Bring some knees in towards the body. Explorations. It's been a little time catching the ankles from inside of the legs. Letting the knees relax out to the side. So this might really pull your chest and chin way up. Try to keep a long neck. If it works better for you to carefully bring your feet to the floor one at a time for this pose. Okay, just letting the inseams lengthen. Arches, the big arches of the inner feet. The inner ankles the inner line of the lower legs, the inner lines of the knees, the inner thighs. All of that connects up into the inner pelvis. Looking for a nice release and lengthening of all those muscles one more time. And release your knees out of that and catch your shins once again. Bring your big toes together, reach your legs up into the air. Elbows slide to the floor and your hands on your thighs. Look at the spaces between your toes with non-attachment. Relaxing your front shoulders. Just 
seven, three more cycles of breath, feel feet in the air. Separating your feet slightly wider and bringing your arms up as well. Belly center, letting that be grounded. Let's do a little light lymphatic massage, light touch with the fingers coming downward on the legs, just whatever you can reach. Tracing a few times, feeling free to move a little or bend your knees to get more access. So the lymph is a light touch. Feeling energy and sensation. And you fold your knees down once again. Neck long, little ankle work to finish. So toes towards and away, five times, so two, spread toes, pull back, just range of motion, no more, point toes, curl, stretch tops of feet, three, three, four, four, let's alternate on this one for the brain, so Right toes point, left toes pull back and switch it. Let's do that one more time just to play with that alternating, relax. Safely lowering your feet to the ground. So and working on this, keeping them close to the body, using the belly strength to bring them down. Maybe one comes down first. No harming with the practice. Stretch your legs out. That was a lot of in with the hips, so letting those front hips relax. A big reach overhead, we can do a little lift up, little arch and stretch the front hips open again. And arrange yourself on the back of your body comfortably. Sometimes I start here with my one hand on my navel, one hand on my sternum, feeling that midline in the front body and asking for soft, relaxed energy in those places. We let go of the holding of the Uriana here. So intentionally relaxing the belly. It's okay to notice and refine as you notice, but keep it to a minimum, just what's needed. And eventually let your arms come out and down so that you're even. and your shoulders can relax back. Eyes relax back. Creating space. so that our true awareness can be revealed. Feeling your vital energy. Sometimes our hearts open and we process feelings in this pose, that's okay.
Within the circles of our lives, we dance the circles of the years, the circles of the seasons within the circles of the years, the cycles of the moon within the circles of the seasons, the circles of our reasons within the cycles of the moon. Again, again, we come and go, change, changing, hands join, unjoin in love and fear, grief and joy. The circles turn, each giving into each, into all. Only music, music keeps us here, each by all the others held. In the hold of hands and eyes, we turn, we turn in pairs, that joining, joining, each to all again. And then we turn aside alone, out of the sunlight gone, into the darker circles of the turn. Circle of breath deepening. Cycle of practice coming to conclusion. Allow yourself to feel complete. And to make your way back to seated pose for a moment. Check in with your stillness. How, how would it be to sit for a minute and your body now relaxed? Resting the mind on the breath. Noticing the noticer. Welcoming peace in yourself that can be shared and offered to all. May all beings everywhere find freedom and peace. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Thank you, friends. That might have been a lot of core strengthening. But I've, I've heard that I make it pretty fun. <laughs>